Welcome, everyone, to another Casual Tuesday edition of AEW Dark. I am Excalibur, and as always, joined by the human suplex machine, Taz. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, thank you. And tomorrow night, the first night of Fighter Fest, kicks off at 8, 7 Central, live on TNT from the HEB Center in Austin, Texas. But before we get there, we've got a huge night of action in store for the folks at home, Taz. Excalibur, a very big episode of AEW Dark happening right now. Team Taz representation all over the show, so you know and you know it's gonna be kick-ass. We all know, Taz. Of course. So let's not delay any further and throw it down to our colleague, Justin Roberts, standing by inside the ring. This bout is set for one fall with a 20 minute time limit. Approaching the ring from the Hardy compound in Cameron, North Carolina, weighing 221 pounds, Matt Hardy. Matt Hardy, accompanied by nearly the entire Hardy family office. Coming into action here tonight on AEW Dark, he will also be in action tomorrow night live on TNT AEW Dynamite, kicking off Fighter Fest, Matt Hardy versus Christian Cage. His opponent from Minneapolis, Minnesota, weighing 208 pounds, Ja C. I mean, long time issues between Matt Hardy and Christian Cage. I know both these men for a very long time, meaning Christian Cage was not out here, and Matt Hardy, and I've seen them battle, I've seen them hug and be buddies and seen them fight. So, speaking of fight, at Fighter Fest tomorrow night in Austin, Texas, it's gonna go down between Christian Cage and that man right there, Big Money Matt. Big Money Matt Hardy. Of course, made his presence known at the conclusion of that awesome AEW World Championship title match between Kenny Omega and Jungle Boy. Kenny Omega was victorious. The elite attacked Jungle Boy. Christian Cage came out to Jungle Boy's aid, but then Matt Hardy taking a shot at Christian Cage that night. Well, Matt probably felt like Christian was trying to steal Jungle Boy's spotlight. Some feeling it was like you saying, helping Jungle Boy, but you know. So potentially Matt Hardy might've been trying to recruit Jungle Boy for the HFO. Well, that's a good move if you can get Jungle Boy. I, you know, I, would, I don't blame him if he's trying to do that, yeah. Jungle Boy for Team Taz? I do you gonna make some overtures? Share, I do not okay. share business here. You know. But, you know, I, I'm, I'm a gentleman. I come out here to do commentary. I do my best. And I thank you for that every time. Tim. I'm new at this. Yes. Hammerlock here applied by the show man, Matt Hardy. No, Jossie, actually, has the hammerlock applied. No, I was going to say this young oh. man has the hammerlock. Bro, are you kidding me? <laughs> well, you're just starting out. You said it yourself. Now, that's Matt Hardy with the hammerlock. Yeah, right yes, it is. I just yes, want to make is. sure that's who that is. Yep, yep. We, I was, you, you, you can't let someone finish a sentence. That was the problem. If you would listen to your elders and let me finish the sentence, you would have understood where I was going. But now I'm not going to do it. Because I'm angry. <laughs> Jossie gets to the rope. Referee Mike Posey asks for the rope. Wow. Nothing fancy about that, right? And Jossie finding himself surrounded by the HFO. You better get back to the oh, oh. Drop kick to the back of the head while Jossie was distracted. That's Matt Hardy. Tough, yeah, that's a tough shot right there. Really making the most of, uh, of the presence of the Hardy family office on the outside. That distraction really hurt Jossie, and now you see Matt Hardy. Look at this. Just raking at the, the face of Jossie. I would have loved to hear what he just said about Christian Cage, but he decided to speak all over it. Steamroller Jones. That's you, bro. He said something about Christian Cage, and I'm going to kick your ass tomorrow night in Austin, Texas. Live on Dynamite, I think that's what he said. 8, 7 Central on TNT, or join us around the world. Thumbs in, Matt, you know better than that. Get those thumbs in, son. <laughs> you know what he's doing, right? I've seen it somewhere before. <laughs> <laughs> that was funny. Hardy mocking the man he will face tomorrow night. Night one of Fighter Fest from AGB Center in Austin, Texas. Oh, Jossie, nice escape into the ring. Good speed there. Single leg drop kick there by Jossie. A second one. Jossie leaping elbow drop. Hook of the near leg, Matt Hardy kicking out. Young man got a lot of height right there on that elbow. Yeah, tremendous explosion by Jossie. 
Can he keep the offense going on big money Matt? Any little hesitation, the veteran Matt Hardy shuts him down. Oh, nice counter though. Jossie floats over the shoulder of Hardy, swing and a miss, side effect. That might be it if Matt wanted to cover him, I think that would have been it. And Matt Hardy just staring daggers at Jossie. Looking at Jossie the way I look at you after the show. Same look. Another a side effect. Second side effect. The stained disgust look. And now Matt Hardy laying in more punishment. Left nice. and yeah. right, Jossie trying to cover up. Taz, to be fair, you look at me like that all the time. <laughs> oh, Christian Cage got to be watching this deal, it's thinking, all right. Thought I knew Matt Hardy very well. I best beware, though, come tomorrow night. Here we go. Matt Hardy locks in the leech. And he is cranking on Jossie, and Jossie forced to tap out. Here is your winner, Matt Hardy. Big money, Matt Hardy. With the victory here tonight, will it be the same story tomorrow on Dynamite when Big Money Matt faces Christian Cage? Yeah, Christian, best beware. I know uh, he feels he knows Matt Hardy very well. He better be careful. This might be a little bit of a different Matt Hardy come tomorrow night on Dynamite. AEW Dynamite Fighter Fest, night one. Uh oh. Hold on a second. Matt oh. Hardy, oh, uh, George Joel. Well, he accepted the, the position here in the HFO. As we know, Excalibur, and and Matt Hardy asking, asking to be toweled down after after this effort. Wow! Tonight, wow! This is. Uh, I'm not sure why this is up to George Joel to do this and not. George well, doesn't seem too happy with this role here, obviously. The rest of the HFO. You know what? Tomorrow night, after Matt Hardy beats the ass of Christian Cage, George Jones might, he might be doing that same thing tomorrow night, wiping down the brow of, of Big Money Matt. Well, we will find out what will happen tomorrow night. Fighter Fest, night one, live from Austin, Texas, 8, 7 Central on TNT. <laughs> wow. Elite general manager, huh? The greatest wrestler of all time getting his hands on his own professional wrestling game where I create the cards. This is my universe. We have a challenger online. What would a layman know about professional wrestling, huh? There is clearly some bugs in the system or something. I'm not, I don't lose. I've got every belt in the universe. How am I losing in this game? Think you have what it takes? Prove it with AEW Elite General Manager. Draft your favorite AEW wrestlers and book your own shows from week to week. Download AEW Elite General Manager, available July 15th on iOS and Android. Ahead of his collision with absolute Ricky Starks at Fighter Fest, the machine Brian Cage is in action next. is set for a one fall with a 20 minute time limit approaching the ring from chico california weighing 274 pounds he is the ftw world heavyweight champion the machine brian k Chaz, it's been a minute since the ftw ftw title has been defended here in aew but we do not have to wait that much longer tomorrow night 8-7 Central live on TNT, Cage versus Starks. His opponent from Waterbury, New York, weighing 193 pounds, Fox Vineyard. Yeah, it's a tough deal. I got to be honest. I know a lot of fans are looking forward to tomorrow night in Austin, Texas, live on Dynamite, Cage versus Ricky Starks for the FTW World title, to your point. You know, like I've said recently, you know, it's been a toxic relationship 
with these two men. And sometimes the best way to get family members to chill out and make everything nice is a good old fashioned fight. And that's what we're gonna have tomorrow for the FTW title when Cage collides with Starks. Fox Vineyard charging in, hitting a rising upper cut strike. Boot to the midsection, he floats up and over Brian Cage. Cage, swing and a miss. Back elbow connected though. Vineyard sent into the rope. Cage telegraphed that, but comes right back the soul butt, kick to the chest. That's the thing, Brian Cage, it, it's just, it, it, he's so athletic, so powerful, so quick. He's got every single attribute you need in a pro wrestler to be successful. Hence why he was my first pick, you know, in Team Taz. Uh, you know, when I started my managerial advisory role here in this company, Brian Cage, as you know, was the first guy that I brought into this company. Brian Cage, long reigning FTW World Heavyweight Champion. And he has the opportunity. I think he's actually had that title longer than me. <laughs> <laughs> to be honest with you. I was gonna say, he's, gonna, he's got another opportunity to chalk up another win tomorrow night, 8, 7 Central on Dynamite. Austin, Texas, live from the HEB Center. And Fox Vineyard, though. Vineyard, uh, he's worried about ripping that elbow pad, and he's got a little bit of wild look, but you better beware. Oh! Because that's what happens when you act silly against a machine. Cage missed with the right, landed with the left. Plants Vineyard on the cover. Two, no, Vineyard able to kick out. And you know, it, it's been very tough. I mean, as you know, I mean, Ricky Starks is not just a member of Team Taz, but he's a dear friend of mine. He's a he's such a key member of Team Taz, as you know. He's a, he's a lieutenant at arms, more or less, of Team Taz. And you know, oh, yeah, that's oh, a drill the claw. Drill claw. It's just a matter of time. Let's just end it. The lateral press and the victory. There is your winner, the FTW World Heavyweight Champion, the Machine, Brian. Cage. But for all these months, all the tension between Ricky and Brian, it's been difficult for me. And it's been difficult for Hook, and it's been difficult for Hobbs. We've cost Hobbs a match because of it. I just see Brian Cage finish this man off, Vineyard, Drill Claw City. And we'll see if he can do that tomorrow night in Austin, Texas at Fighter Fest 1 against Starks, then he, Cage, will retain the FTW title. Or absolute Ricky Starks might be the new FTW champion. Well, it has been percolating. It has been simmering for months, and it all comes to a head tomorrow night live on TNT 8, 7 Central. Tag team action coming up right now. Two of my favorite guys here in AEW for sure. The acclaimed that's coming at you. This is a tag team bout set for one fall with a 20 minute time limit. Introducing first, the acclaimed. Yo, we are the acclaimed and we hate behaving. About to send y'all back to basic training. Sorry, today you don't go far. Y'all don't look tough. Hey, what are you, the Coast Guard? Yo, you boys not hot. Fight against us, that's the Charlie Fox trot. Write y'all off like a tax deduction cause you never found weapons of mass destruction. Where were they? Where were they? <laughs> AEW! The Acclaimed have arrived! And their opponents have combined weight of 450 pounds, a team of Derek Pizzaturo and Roman Roselle. Derek Pizzaturo on your left, Roman Roselle on your right. Be taking on the acclaimed in just a moment. When you say the right and the left, it's difficult for people watching at home. The one man is wearing a hat. So Roman's wearing a hat. Correct? Yes, Roman, Roman Roselle starting things off for so his why team. Why can't you just say Roman's wearing the hat? Why do you gotta be fancy right, left, left? What if someone's dyslexic watching this? What if they watch it through a mirror on their TV? Is that something you do often, Taz? I love doing mirror TV stuff. I do it all the time. All right, well, you know what? I'll keep that in mind next time. I'll, I'll, I'll simplify it for you. So your mirror TV. Thing. You're Every a good tournament. man. You're a good man. You know what? Try to, try to learn. Nice sit out right there into a hammerlock by V Max Caster. Roman Roselle trying to fight back up to a vertical base. Caster has that hammerlock cinched in, but Roselle able to reverse it, takes the side headlock. 
Got control right there. Let's see what Cass has got in mind. Drop down action. Leapfrog goes over the top. Does Max Caster rose? Oh, Ooh, little backhand, huh? Max Caster. I'll tell you what, that Caster, I mean, I've mentioned it before on here. It's, he is a big athlete. A lot of people, I don't think TV does it justice how big of a guy he is, dude. You know what I mean? I know you've never been close to him. He doesn't want you near him, he told me, but I'm just telling you, he's a big cat. It's not far from the truth. Big back elbow to the back of the head by Anthony Bowens, the five-tool player. Tremendous athlete. Boss was an awesome baseball player, Seton Hall University, out there in Jersey. Look at that fireman's carry dump right there, huh? Roselle. You know he played baseball cheating home? Just trying to help you out, buddy. Thanks, Tyson. So, the teamwork. All right. There we go. Salute. Zaturo and Roselle take down Anthony Bowens. Gut wrench. The power there, huh? Anthony Bowens out. Oh, gets flattened. But Zaturo cover. Big, strong, raw bone man. Bearded, bald man. Ah, ooh, oh, great counter. Using Pizzaturo's strength and speed against him, Bowens. Good job right there by Bowens. Anthony Bowens, great. Tag out to Platinum, Max Caster. Claimed the trip. Bowens comes off, drop kick to the chest. Oh, just adding insult to injury. Max Caster, number two ranked tag team here in AEW. Oh, Clint is making a lot of noise, man. Absolutely. You don't like you don't like when I interrupt you. Sometimes I notice it's, it ticks you off a little bit, doesn't it? No, it doesn't. Tess. Maybe you need to work alone. Oh boy. <laughs> Is oh, that an option? Might work alone, maybe Is that an a option? Dog. Could I do that? Tell Shivani and Paul White, get away and just do elevation by yourself. Just stand out there by yourself and talk. Right here. I, I'm, I am enticed by this task. Who do I need to talk to to make this happen? Tony Khan. All right. That's who you Tony, are talk. you listening? <laughs> <laughs> anyway. <laughs> Watch out. There's a turf oh. driving. Bowen's face first into the knee. Roman Roselle clothesline takes down Caster, back elbow. Good job by Roman, gotta keep on moving now, man. He's got, oh, watch out here. Sends Max Caster for a ride, as you mentioned, Des Caster, not a small man. Oh, no, no, look at that, a little German suplex, or at least German. Big strength being shown by Roselle. Max Caster backed up into the ropes, Irish whip reversed. The trip attempted it once again. Move to the midsection, swinging neck breaker. Wow, landed hard. Bowen's got him good there. Ooh! Drop kicks to the knees, and Caster. Caster's gonna yeah, drop and boom, straight back. Cut wrench, or excuse me, a deadlift back drop. Deadlift back drop, back drop yeah. throw right there. Good job. Caster stepping in to the clothesline. Roman Roselle in a lot of trouble here. It's a hard hit match, man. Absolutely. Nice. Bowens sets him up Whoa. for the mic drop and the cover. <laughs> One, two, don't three. Matter. Don't matter who covers him. Here are your winners. The acclaimed. The acclaimed. Top of the chain. So I'll, I'll tell you, man. You know the talk about the noise the they're making in the tag team division here in AEW. The, the acclaimed. Bowens and Caster. No joke. I promise. Acclaimed. Here we see the beginning of the end for Roman Roselle. It was the misdirect. Misdirect and neck breaker. And then the mic drop by Caster. Spinning slam first by Bowens. Caster didn't realize he was not legal. Bowens said, get the hell out of the ring, my man. I got it. <laughs> you know what, Taz? In spite of themselves, they work very well together, much like you and I. Yeah, speak for yourself. <laughs> <laughs> Big time singles matchup here next on AEW Dark. Diamante in action. The following contest is scheduled for one fall with a 20 minute time limit. Making her way to the ring from the 305. 
Diamante. Diamante making a return to action here tonight on AEW Dark. But earlier today, Diamante had this to say. This last year has been pretty eventful for your girl, La Mas Dura Diamante. I've gone on to win tournaments. I've gone on to main event dark, elevation. And quite frankly, I've stepped up where it matters. And all these other girls in the locker room, where are they? Who else is stepping up? Fucking you, Big Swole. You want to come out here and play second fiddle and be a sidekick to somebody else in a group? Oh yeah, you heard me. Shots fired. Click, clack, boom, boom. Her opponent from Atlanta, Georgia, Harlow O'Hara. Harlow O'Hara making her AEW debut, and Taz Diamante calling out Big Swole. Yeah, I mean, that just agenda full throttle right at Big Swole. Respect that out of Diamante. She's a tough, tough lady, as is Big Swole. Very interesting challenge. Sometimes that's all it takes, just getting someone's face, say, I want to fight you, I don't like you, let's go. And that's basically what Diamante did. And Diamante and Swole, too. Tough competitors with absolutely no back down in them. Diamante turns the tables on Harlow O'Hara, backing O'Hara to the ropes. Overhand shot. Deep arm drag by Diamante. Yeah, well done. Taz, what did you think of Harlow O'Hara's headgear? Freaked me out a little bit, gotta be honest. Why is that? Kind of remind me of uh, Statue of Liberty. All right, I don't, no further questions. Yeah. Harlow O'Hara looking for a scissor of the leg, actually with a boot underneath the chin of Diamante. He's in the up kick, but oh. Monty charged in. Sweep of the leg, barely a one count. Just picked the ankle. There's a back of the hamstring on that one. Two count there for Diamante. Diamante in control. See O'Hara trying to break the grip. Standing switch here. Yeah, you can see the Statue of Liberty from the, the ferry. Well, there's certain areas of Brooklyn where you can see it. Oh! oh. Right from your bedroom window, like I did as a kid growing up. I saw it far away, but it was there always. Freaks me out a little bit. So a lot of people use the Statue of Liberty as a source of inspiration. I know, I know, but I've just seen a lot of things, you know, my youth around that area. Uh, You're talking like a Ghostbuster situation where the Statue of Liberty <laughs> came to life? Yeah. Oh! oh, oh, oh. dreams like that, yeah. I, had, I got my ass kicked by the Statue of Liberty. The torch cracked against my head. Everything was weird. Wow. Yeah. It's like 19, 20 years old dreaming like this. It's crazy. 19, 20 years old, that old? Yeah. Sure. I'm going to send you a $300 invoice for this therapy session, by the way. <laughs> As O'Hara chopping down Diamante in the corner. She's taking time. She's got to be careful. Diamante be baiting her in. There you go. Telegraphed the, the running knee strike. Diamante sweeps out O'Hara. And they're. Oh. Leaping drop kick in the corner. A lot of impact there. O'Hara cover. Diamante. Ooh, very nearly picked up the victory. That was close. Diamante can take a lot of punishment. O'Hara was putting it on her, but not enough. It was Diamante. She's in the driver's seat as the cliche goes. She was looking for the slice bread, but oh! Back elbow. Now Diamante coming around the corner. Lands on her feet. Russian leg sweep. Diamante's not done, though. It's the ropes. Comes down. O'Hara staggering up to her feet. Diamante standing. Sliced bread. Got all of it. Got all of it. Absolutely did. And Harlow O'Hara in tremendous trouble as Diamante has got a half straight jacket locked in. Could have to tap out here. Got to tap out. Yeah, he can't. Just. Harlow O'Hara with nowhere left to go. Here is your winner, Diamante. Well, she put the challenge out earlier in this match on her way to the ring towards Big Swole, and then just came out here and was aggressive as all hell on O'Hara and captured the victory via submission. Yeah, very, very compelling challenge laid out by Diamante. And if you're Big Swole, I don't think there's any way you could back down from this. Now, you know how big Swole, she's not going to back down. She'll, she'll, I'm sure she'll accept the challenge. And this is a big time fight in the making. Way worse when I do it to you. Between Diamante and 
Big Swole. As Ethan Page goes into a coffin match against Darby Allen in Austin, Texas, live on Dynamite, Page deals with Ryan Mantel next, right here on Dark. This contest is set for one fall with a 20 minute time limit. Approaching the ring from Hamilton, Ontario, Canada. Weighing 225 pounds, all ego, Ethan Page. Tomorrow night, 8, 7 central on TNT. Fighter Fest, night one. It will be this man, all ego, Ethan Page, taking on Darby Allen in a coffin match and Scorpio Sky, Ethan Page's partner, and the men of the year joining us here on commentary. Yeah, He's a baby. From Georgetown, Texas, weighing 240 pounds, Ryan Mantel. Sky, great to have you here. Great to be here as usual. Tav, you are drop dead gorgeous, brother. <laughs> Well, thank you, Scott. Look, I cannot wait. I can't wait until tomorrow night, this coffin match in Austin, Texas. Kobe. I cannot wait for that man right there, all ego, Mr. Page himself, to beat up Darby Allen and beat him in his own match. I can't wait. Taz, when I tell you that Ethan Page is ready for this match, yeah. you got to believe me. Ethan Page, I've never seen him this hyped up. Look at him. Look at the hips movement. Hips look are like lightning. They, they're not lying. Those hips don't lie. Those hips ain't out there lying. No, no. They're telling nothing but the truth. T-U-R, or, or T-U-R-U-F-F, Toof, Toof. I hear you. Big right hands being delivered by Ryan Mantell, going to work on the arm of all ego Ethan Page. That's a big man, that Ryan Mantell, but, you know, Ethan Page is so savvy. Look at that running shoulder block, the power. And Ethan Page knows how to use his size, as we saw with that big shoulder tackle. Yeah. <laughs> That's my guy. <laughs> Well, your guy will be heading into battle tomorrow night as a part of Fighter Fest, live from the HEB Center in Austin, Texas. AEW Dynamite, 8, 7 Central on TNT. We're going back to Texas <laughs> to bury Darby Allen. I hope it happens. Can't stand Darby Allen. All of us in Team Taz hate his guts, but yet I know yourself and Ethan Page despise Darby also. We're gonna do it for you. Yes. We're gonna do it for all those fans out there, fans oh. of the men of the year. I love that it. have been waiting for us to put the final nail in Darby's coffin. Pun and intended. My man, yes, pun Ethan intended. Page is gonna do it. Can't wait. Ryan Mantel escapes out of the suplex. Very nice oh. drop kick by Mantel. Excellent e drop kick. Ethan Page on roller skates there. Mantel oh. collides with Page in the corner. Some Body shots, a chop to the chest, Sky. The guy's looking like he's in a bit of trouble here. I'm telling you, it's rope-a-dope, rope-a-dope. Look at this. He's got him now. Oh, wait. Ethan Page maybe underestimating Ryan Mantel. Oh, oh no, 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 Ethan's in, in charge here. Oh, wow. Arm cross into the iconoclasm. Brings Mantel up into the corner. Uh-oh. This could be... This could be the end of the night for Ryan Mantell. I think Mantell is Dunsky. <laughs> D-U-N-Z-O, he's Dunzo. The Ego's Edge, the hook of the far leg, and the victory. The winner of this match, all Ego, Ethan Page. Top tier, we premiere. We made each other in. I mean, are they in? Oh, it's so good. Uh, you guys are going to be partying tomorrow night after the match in Austin, Texas, after Dynamite. Coffin match against Darby Allen, Ethan Page. Look at this. Can't wait. Beware, Darby Allen. You're getting dropped on the back of your head in that coffin match. Executed to perfection. Taz, we're having an after party. You are invited. And how about my guys? Team Taz is invited too? Oh, Team Taz, of course. Oh, yes, yes. Okay, good. Whoever you want to bring. Okay, except for Kate. Oh, he's right. AEW Dynamite, the first ever coffin match tomorrow night, 8 7 Central on TNT. Ladies action coming up right now, featuring the one and only Big Swole. That's next. This contest is scheduled for one fall with a 20 minute time limit. Making her way to the ring from Clearwater, Florida. Big Swole! 
Diaz. What about the challenge laid out by Diamante earlier tonight? Yeah, basically saying straight up, she wants to fight Big Swole. I don't think there's any back down in Big Swole. Her opponent from Cairo, Egypt, Sahara Seven. Sahara Seven making her AEW Dark debut tonight. She's going one on one with Big Swole. Swole luck, not looking too bothered by that challenge from Diamante. Aubrey Edwards drawing the duties for this singles match here tonight. Sahara Seven, big swole, collar double tie up, center of the ring. I think the win of this match will be the lady wearing black. You know what, Taz? See that? That's why you're better at gambling than I am. <laughs> nice stand and switch right there by Swole. Now I'm going to beat you on the under tonight. All right, all right. Snap man right there. Watch out. Oh, wow. Kick. Big impact. Big impact. Kick right along the spine by Big Swole. She had a little bit of her hair. Maybe came out. I used to have hair like that when I was a Tasmaniac. Like this young lady from Egypt. It was like kind of my gimmick. So are you saying this is gimmick and fringe? No, I had dreads, bro. So uh, who's infringing upon me? No one yet. Okay. Ooh. All right. Sahara Seven splash in the corner. That's big swole, a little bit rocked. And Sahara Seven hip attack. Swole's hurting. Swole's hurting. And a running uppercut. Right on point to the jaw, Big Swole. Sahara Seven covers. Just on one, one count, excuse me. Sahara now, look at his forearms while Swole's down, just raining those, those forearms down, just cracking her. Sahara Seven keeping the pressure on Big Swole. Swole, just a palm strike. The heel of her palm into the ribs of Sahara Seven, but Seven responds. Three consecutive knee strikes. One for the fourth, Swole blocked. Overhand elbow strike. Sweep, staggered, and Seven knocked back, as was Big Swole, swinging a miss. Ooh. Sahara Seven, boot, knee strike. And went for Nice, nice counter. DDT! Oh. Sahara Seven got absolutely spiked by Big Swole with the DDT. And you can see Seven very unsteady on her feet. Swole has her lined up the cross chop. Swole hits the rope, second cross chop. Sahara barely had a chance to get up to her feet. She's still staggered. She avoids the pump kick by Swole. Swole ducks the clothesline. Swole picks the ankle, brings Sahara down. She's got control of the right ankle of Seven. Boot to the midsection. Could be lining her up. Yes, it looks like the Clearwater Cloverleaf. Big Swole really wrenching back at Sahara Seven, forced to tap out. The winner of this match, Big Swole. So Diamante needs to pay attention to that right there. Big Swole with the Cloverleaf. And Diamante, she threw down the gauntlet. She issued the challenge to Big Swole. And I think, Taz, I don't think it's a matter of if, I think it's a matter of when Diamante and Big Swole collide. I think you're right. She didn't even heel hook that leg, man, but she, she still got it. To heel hook the uh, back of the heel, I should say, of seven there. But she still got the victory to Big Swole. I'm glad y'all having fun. They say that time is money, so allow me to spend some of AEW's time. Yeah. Diamante! I heard what you said about me, and use a mark-ass trick for that. You can't even 
enlist your own accolades without tearing somebody down. You too busy worrying about what swole finna do. How, how about you become all elite first, ho? Oh boy. Now as your friend, your, your dearest friend, I pray that I only have to say this once. Keep my name out your mouth before my foot goes in your ass. Taz, I'm confused. Did she accept the challenge? Uh, I think it's a warning shot. Okay. Challenge will be accepted shortly, I feel. Big Soul Diamante on a collision course. I do this, you don't. 305 now, 727. Talk shit, get hit. The high flying Dante Martin goes one on one with RSP next here on Dark. Next contest is set for one fall with a 20 minute time limit. Approaching the ring from Minneapolis, Minnesota, weighing 195 pounds, Dante Martin. Big test for young Dante Martin here tonight on AEW Dark. See how he is able to bounce back from adversity. Wow. His opponent from Sandusky, Ohio, weighing 283 pounds, RSP. Oh, oh my God, Dante oh. Martin! RSP should have thrown a jacket like that. Pissed off, Dante. Dante sprung up whoa, to the whoa, top, whoa, hit whoa, the, whoa. the hook on Rana to the outside, lands on his feet inside the ring, RSP swinging a miss, Dante sending him into the ropes, Dante going for the trip, RSP able to avoid contact, leapfrog up and over the top, Dante off the bottom rope, shotgun drop kick. It's gonna be tough for RSP, hold on, RSP here to deal with Dante athletically. And you can just tell the difference in the physicality of both the, the, the physiques, I should say, of both these athletes. You can see the, the tail told by the body, the upper body, the scars on RSP, competitor, and uh, I mean, a tremendous independent pro wrestling competitor, but also competitor on the deathmatch scene as well. And he is, oh man, damn. Elevated Dante over the top and caught him with a kick on the way down. That was a nasty kick on its point. RSP now controlling the pace of Dante Martin, and I think this is the biggest key to victory for RSP in his AEW debut. A lot of confidence in RSP. You can but, see just his poison here, but got to be careful. You can't sleep on someone as athletic and fast as Dante. You no, know, Dante's proved his resilience time and time again, but RSP landed some heavy-handed shots on Dante Martin in the corner. And sending Dante for a ride across the ring. RSP very pleased with the, how things are going so far. It was a rocky start, but since then. Well, he keeps getting cocky to that level. It's gonna be a rocky ending and for RSP. So I understand having a, a little bit of a swagger and an attitude, I get it. And it's your debut here, and that's fine, and you know, in the company, but you're dealing with somebody here you know, like Dante who can really just catch you out of nowhere. I don't care how many death matches you've been in, you know, Bob White don't fight back. You know what I'm saying? I know don't. What you're saying, Taz. Yes, sir. Dante Martin brought up once again. This time Dante able to roll through. Diamond cross body. Takes Great down, job. Takes down RSP, creates. A moment for Dante to recover, but he can't afford to waste too much time. Yeah, Dante's got to, you're right, he's got to try and follow up. He's just giving up some size right here to RSP. And as you pointed out, RSP's been in some battles, been in some war, so you know he's tough. But Dante showing his own heavy-handedness and a beautiful drop kick there. RSP up in the corner. Dante looking for the hammer to throw. That size advantage. That was smart by RSP. Good job. Oh, but he got caught. Anzi Gary knocks RSP towards center. Dante Martin coming off the moonsault. 
press. Hooks the far leg. RSP able to kick out. Dante Martin needs to string together a few more offensive techniques to keep his opponent reeling. Yeah, he's got RSP hurting right now. He's got, you're right, he's got to just keep on going here. Uh, you know, he's got to keep it. Uh, another good forearm shot. Dante charging in. Casadora rolls through. He's got the legs hook. RSP kicking out. I thought he had it. I thought Dante oh, had it. Oh. Oh, oh. Big time shot. Good job right there by RSP. A veteran move. You know your match sense. You know where you are by the ropes. Use the rope as an ally to break that kick out. Uh, he, to break the cover, I should say. Even more impressive after getting rocked by that kick from Dante Martin. He had his wits about him. Ooh, faked him out there. Fake RSP. Nice. Faked him twice. Caught him with the Enziguri the third time. Deceivingly athletic with that kick. He certainly is. And now RSP heading up to the top rope. What does he have in mind for Dante Martin? He's gonna fly, he's gonna walk the rope a bit. Frog splash. Big time frog splash, big time impact cover. Upset in the making, no, Dante kicking out. Yeah, that would have been a massive upset. You notice how Dante was trying to roll away, roll out of RSP's he was, range. You're right. But sometimes when you're hurting, you know, you can't. It seems like just a short roll, but it's actually it's a far way to get out of the way, and, and RSP was able to judge. Judge it in the air and get his body across to you know, flatten out on Dante. I think one more big time shot off the top rope. That could be the end of the night for Dante Martin. This might be coming up right about now. RSP sets out the scent on nobody home. Big time massive landing on the back of the head. That's the type of impact that jars your entire body. RSP getting up. And gets taken down by the flipping Hurricane Rana. RSP tried to block it, but his hands got caught. And he went, he went flying anyway. Ooh, flipping over the top with the stunner. Dante covers. Two, three. The winner of this match, Dante Martin. Well, it started out hot, and it wasn't easy, but Dante Martin coming away with a big victory here tonight on Dark. Definitely wasn't easy, but a nice victory over a uh, type of athlete I, we've never seen here at AEW that they compete against. RSP put up a, a hell of a fight. And you know, not not a not a high flying type athlete, but definitely showed a lot of resilience that RSP will watch this from the top of the match. This is what happened. Just no hands, Dante leaping up to the top. There's that hook kick, and then Dante. That's that was the end of the night for RSP coming over the top with the stunner. Dante Martin victorious here tonight on AEW Dark. Tag team action coming at you right now, featuring the Dark Orders, Evil Uno and Stu Grayson. Join the Dark Order. This is a tag team match set for one fall with a 20 minute time limit. Making their way to the ring at a combined weight of 422 pounds, Stu Grayson and Evil Udo. Well, here they come. Dark Join Order dark in order. full effect, just about, minus I would say Anna J, right? Am I missing anyone? They're all here, including Negative One, the leader of the Dark Order. Yeah, really formidable show of force here for the Dark Order, even without Anna J. If Justin Roberts had a purple tie on, I would thought maybe he'd be part of the Dark Order. A welcome addition. I think you should join. Their opponents had a combined weight of 418 pounds, a team of Sean Maluda and Papa Don. Sean Maluda, we've seen in action here before on AEW Dark. Papa Don making his debut here tonight. Papa Don, a fixture of the Northeast professional wrestling independent scene. Interesting to see what he can do here tonight against Grayson and Uno, but Sean Maluda starting things off with Evil Uno here tonight. Yeah, it should be a good tag team matchup. All four athletes pretty much can flat out go in the middle of the ring, so we'll see what happens. Now, again, it's about chemistry, right, x Cal? It's about having tag team cohesiveness. And Uno and Grayson, I mean, it's tough to match them, you know? Absolutely. Sean Maluda, though, swift shot to the midsection, doubles over Uno. 
Maluda hits the ropes, comes in, shoulder tackle. Uno returns with one of his own. Out of the hands, look at that, stopping them on the fingers. Little joints, little bones and joints in those fingers. If you have fingers, you know what I mean. They hurt. I want to remind everybody that AEW will be returning to Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania, Wednesday, August 11th for Dynamite, and then Friday, August 13th for the debut, the historic debut of AEW Rampage. Tickets for both events are on sale right now, AEWTIX.com, including special combo offers for both nights as Stu Grayson, Great Hork on Rana, takes down Papadon. That was phenomenal. That was phenomenal. He said, Papadon, this is not his first rodeo. That's well documented and good job right there with that elbow off the ropes. Turning Grayson inside out, Papadon keeping the pressure on. Good focus here by Papadon, but Grayson Turns and knee lift to the midsection. Blind tag by Uno. Yeah, unbeknownst to Papadon. Watch out, watch before it is German suplex. Wow, gut just just deadlift by Evo well, Uno. He, he had his hips, you know, as you saw Excalibur, really, he had a high grip and had his hips, Uno did, on, way deep under Papadon's hip, so it's able to get a high throw off like that. And the hammer throw into the corner. High boot by Evil Uno. And this is the tag team cohesion you were speaking of, Taz. Yeah, they just, you know, look, you, you know Evil Uno and Grayson longer than I do. You know, you've fought a lot of matches back in the day. You know these guys better than I do. And I've got to know them since my time here in AEW. And they are just tremendous uh, true pros, veterans that are they're, they're always on point. Big time aggression, as always shown by Stu Grayson. Took down Sean Maluda on the outside. Uno tags in. Nails across the back. I love that stuff. Papa Dunn getting rocked by that elbow ah. strike, but fires back with one of his own. Oh, Uno boxing the ears of Papa Don. Used that second row for momentum, but even Uno shut him down. Sean Maluda grabbing the boot of Uno and Papa Don, just a body block while Uno is strung up in the ropes. Two veteran move, the opponent turns his back, you attack. But you're not going for something fancy, you're just going for something effective. Big time chops, non-stop chops, Papadon. Great strategy being shown by Papadon. He knows to keep his opponent in the corner, Whoop Maluda. Evil Uno isolated in the corner. Sean Maluda going to work. Using those boots. Paul Turner spotting Papadon, grabbing the jacket of Uno. Uno trying to create some distance. Ooh, headbutt. Wow, that didn't affect Maluda. Yeah, Uno. Uno sh should have thought twice about that one. And uh, Sean Maluda giving, giving Uno quadruple thoughts there. Yeah, definitely rang Uno's bell for sure. Papa down right there, body shot. Snapmare coming here. Ooh, kick to the spine. Papa Don just cinches in on headlock. Yeah, he's got it in real tight. <laughs> Look at negative one reaching for the tag. I know he wants in. <laughs> Pop it on once again, grabbing the, the jacket of Uno. A lot of power there. Backdrop, the cover. I mean, uh, Uno tried to stop it. Uno looked like a dump truck in the air. Pop it on. A medium sized one. <laughs> so, so power is Pop it on. Showing a lot of power. And yeah, Maluda now up to the top. Uno shucking off. Uh, oh, Pop it down. And there goes. Crash and burn goes Sean Maluda. Nobody home there for gotta Sean. Got to get Grayson in this thing here. There you go. Swing and a miss, but Maluda's momentum carried him into Papadon. And Grayson just diving body block. The cross chops. Flying like a Canadian Superman. Superman's not Canadian, huh? No, he's Kryptonian, actually. No, he's near America. Great, great corporate synergy with their partner in DC Comics. As Grayson, belly to belly suplex. Support your local comic book store. <laughs> Swinging a mess by Whoa. Papa Don gets spiked by Stu Grayson. Evil Uno. Look at that. Pops Maluda up so effortlessly. The power bomb. Great teamwork shown by Dark Order. That's what I'm saying, man. We talked about throughout the match the chemistry of Uno and Stu Grayson. Papa Don, oh, 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 Grayson with the running punt, and Uno with the pile driver, and Dark Order with the victory.
the winners of this match, Dark Order. Taz, that is a brutal, brutal tag team combination shot. The kick to the face followed up by the pile driver. Yeah, super impressive. Super impressive for sure. Look at this, yeah, right, to just that, just straight the bush and then on top of your head. That sucks. A one-two punch, or rather a one-two kick. Picking up the victory for Dark Order here tonight on AEW Dark Order. The Hollywood hunk, Ryan Nemeth with Blum Wingman in his corner in action next on AEW Dark. following contest is scheduled for one fall with a 20 minute time limit. Being accompanied by the wingman from Hollywood, California. Weighing 208 pounds, the Hollywood hunk, Ryan Nimmin. Before this match gets underway, we'd like to remind everybody that AEW Dynamite returns live here to Jacksonville, Florida. The homecoming edition of Dynamite. The final Dynamite in Jacksonville of the year on Wednesday, August 4th. 8 and 7 Central on TNT. Tickets available right now at AEWTIX.com. His opponent from Winston-Salem, North Carolina, weighing 170 pounds, Marcus Cross. Marcus Cross making his AEW debut here tonight on Dark, Taz. Yes. And I have to ask you, Taz. Yes, sir. The wingmen, we've seen them a few times here, try to style their opponent's hair. Yes. On the outside behind the referee's back. What could they possibly do to Marcus Cross to make his hair look better? I don't quite understand the problem. His hair looks fine. What, what's so I'm saying? What could they do to make it look better? There's not much you could do. Marcus Cross's hair is, I, I think, uh, uh, the fine dickens of any kind of a haircut. I mean, I, I really do. It's um, kind of uh, Albert Einstein type thing, and he was a guy who uh, was very smart back in the day, Einstein from Brooklyn. And, um, you know, Brooklyn, Austria. Oh, no, that was his cousin, Mike Einstein. I'm sorry. I got him It's your cousin, Marvin. Yeah, Marvin from, Einstein. He's from Williamsburg, bro. I made a mistake. Sorry. <laughs> Watch the leapfrog here by Cross. Cross, great speed. Going off the back of Ryan Nemeth. Nice drop kick. I mean, look, to have a hairdo like that, you got to have confidence. I respect this young man's confidence. Oh, that was oh, nice. Footstops bringing off the chest of Nemeth into the elbow drop. He's got a lot of uh, exuberance, does uh, uh, Cross. Oh, look at Avalon. Peter Avalon holding on to save, Ryan Nemeth. Save his, save his buddy. Oh, wait a minute. The trip on the outside. Marcus Cross. Oh, Ooh. chop across the throat. Whoa, 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 whoa. Cross. Oh, God, what a tough landing that was. And, and look at Avalon on the outside. Oh, that's not nice. Come on now, guys. They're undoing the updo. I don't know how much work went into that bafut. I mean, that, uh, what do you call it? Uh, Buffon. Buffon, thank you. What you call it? <laughs> bafut. I believe that's a Pokemon. Yeah, that's uh, Ryan Nemeth. He must dye his roots black. <laughs> Oof. Nemeth sending cross across the ring into the far corner. The patented Nemeth thrusting strut thing. I gotta get a name for that. Oh, that's the Pee Wee Herman news. All right. Do I smell something? I digress. The hammerlock applied. Good hammerlock. Knee in the lower back. You see Cross right here. He's gonna do Get on that hand, that head, I should say, and get all of that weight going back on the hammerlock. She never threw that a lot. I like that hold. Good balance. And having a handful at hair of cross. Years ago, didn't Cher have a hand do like that? Cher. Not like Nemeth, like Cross. Cher, the singer. I if I could turn my time, and I, you could I'd, look into I'd it. find a way to yeah, tell you. No, I hear with that rear chin lock. Ryan Nemeth keeping the pressure on Marcus Cross. 
Cross is trying to. You're thinking of Tina Turner and Mad Max Beyond Thunderdome. Yes. No, not really. Jawbreaker. Yeah. Okay, yeah, maybe you're right. Here comes Cross. Oh, oh, big time shot to the midsection. Kick across the jaw. Marcus Cross lighting up the chest of Ryan Nemeth. Those kicks. Nemeth catches. Cross lands on his feet, swinging a miss by Ryan Nemeth. Corkscrew kick. Nice work there by Cross. Cross looks the far leg. Just the two count. So Tad ticked off. He couldn't get the win there. Cross, that would have been a big upset. We don't need another hero, Taz. <laughs> Tina Turner Jones. Watch out. Oh, Nemeth. Big time Matt return just drove Cross straight to the middle of the ring. And Nemeth. With the hunk of love. <laughs> One, two, three. There is your winner, the Hollywood Hunk, Ryan Nemeth. Excellent job by the Nemeth. Excellent. The wingmen are so happy and proud. Avalon with his Texas orange pants. Getting ready to go to the beach. They were Texas orange pants at the beach? Some beaches. Depends if you're like in uh, Amarillo, maybe, or. Uh, Corpus Christi. Well, you know, Jim Ross, he's sending Peter Avalon a cease and desist for wearing those pants. <laughs> but the wingman in the corner of the victorious Ryan Nemeth here tonight. Spray that man down. One on one women's action. Robin Renegade collides with Penelope Ford right now. This contest is set for one fall with a 20 minute time limit. Approaching the ring from Philadelphia, Pennsylvania, she is Penelope Ford. Before this match gets underway, one on nine minutes, everyone that AEW Dynamite returns to Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania on Wednesday. August 11th, <laughs> Penelope I mean, leads back to, and for the historic debut of AEW Rampage Friday, August 13th, tickets for both events on sale right now, AEWTIX.com, combo package available. Join us for two historic nights in Britsburg. Her opponent from Dayton, Ohio, Robin Renegade. Taz, what about the eyeshadow of Penelope Ford? That was we can get another look at that. I didn't even, I didn't realize she even had it on. She's so beautiful, she don't need eyeshadow. Are you kidding me? Well, I mean, it's like purple on one end, green on the other. It matches her attire. Let me get this straight. So what are you, you going to critique people's makeup now? Is that, well, that's I, the new I was thing impressed now? by it. Oh, okay. You don't seem impressed by many things, so I just thought you were knocking it. Me and Shonaya Twain. Uh, <laughs> yeah, Shonaya Twain. <laughs> nice chop right there. Yeah, that is kind of funky. See, I, I told you. Robin Renegade. Well, I'm good friends with both Kip and Penelope. I'll have a discussion with them about this. I'll talk to Shania about it. <laughs> Shonaya? Okay. Now, she's got that, that we know Penelope Ford. She's a super bad girl. She's got a lot of moon streak in her, buddy. She absolutely does. But Robin Renegade coming in hot in the corner. Oh, massive pump kick delivered. Pinpoint accuracy by Penelope Ford. Just a two count. Well, Renegade is a is a strong athlete too, Robin Renegade. And look at this, using her shin to choke Robin Renegade while protesting with the referee. It was Penelope Ford, now Penelope. It was a golden opportunity. She was right, Taz. She is definitely right. Penelope's always right. I mean, I, look, Kip and I, like I said, are good friends. I'm friends of Penelope. Sometimes I, I go to their house. I have coffee with them, and we have like different types of cakes, like strudel and pound cakes. Oh, good friends. oh my oh. God! Wow. She might be out. Absolutely, might be. No, Robin I, Renegades, man. triple tough. Taz, if you, if you hang out with them so much, how come I've never seen you on their Twitch stream? Well, because I'm not a mark. I don't run around and have to be on social media all the time like the rest of you people. Okay, I stay to myself with my friends privately. I don't know, you posted like three straight days of you vibing out in your car. I didn't, it was one oh, thing oh, I just see. caught on. I, I see, just, I see. That's, I can't help it if different. I go viral, brother. I can't help it, brother. Taz, as, a, as the OJs once said, you got to give the people what they want. <laughs> exactly. Well, right now, Renegade is in trouble here because Penelope is not letting up. 
And it'll be Ford. Oh, had Robin Renegade on the shoulder. Ooh. Back stabber by oh. Robin Renegade. Wow. Penelope's hurting right now. And Robin Renegade, clothesline. She really laid out with that one. Threw her whole body into it to take down Penelope Ford. Penelope struggling to get up to her feet. Penelope's in a lot of pain, and Renegade's trying to get some motivation, some intensity going. Robin Renegade, double knee strike in the corner. Sends Penelope to the outside. Wasting time, burning daylight here. Was Robin Renegade drawing too much? I think she might have been drawing oh. too much for sure. She got caught. She got clocked by that clothesline mm -hmm. from Penelope Ford. Wow, a war of words and of wills here inside the ring on AEW Dark. Two very angry women. Very angry. Overhand shots being exchanged. Robin Renegade. Wow. She really has a downward trajectory on She's those tall. elbows. She's yeah. got that height. The Penelope. Remember, You're done. Carrie. Oh my God. It's oh. the gut buster. Penelope covers. Two, three. The winner of this match, Penelope Ford. That wasn't easy, but Penelope was able to you know, pull it off. That was not easy at all. Yeah, it was getting physical. It was getting chippy. But Penelope Ford maintained the advantage and scored the victory here tonight over Robin Renegade. Penelope Ford, your winner. Tomorrow night on Dynamite, I wrestle Christian Cage one-on-one. -on -one. Yes, that match is happening. I've known Christian Cage for 24 years, and he is legitimately one of the greatest rivals of my career. I've wrestled him hundreds of times, usually in a tag team setting. But the two times that we have faced each other one-on-one -on, -one on television, I have won both. Tomorrow night on Dynamite, I complete the hat trick, and I'm going to beat you a third time, Christian. We're in front of crowds again in Austin, Texas. You think you're going to walk in and you're going to have a moment and defeat Matt Hardy? No. Tomorrow, Christian Cage, it is not your moment. It is my moment because I was robbed of my moment when I first came to AEW. My very first show, we were in the middle of a global pandemic. I didn't get my moment, Christian Cage. Tomorrow night is my moment. Because for the last 16 months, I've been busting my ass in pandemic eras, making sure that AEW is great. I've been busting my ass building the HFO and elevating young talent. You're just gonna walk in here and think you're some kind of overnight success story. You're gonna have a triumphant return to wrestling. You were out for seven years. You should have just stayed home. You know what, I've been injured but I wasn't weak. I didn't miss one single day. I didn't go home for seven years. I've been here the whole while. And tomorrow night, it is not your moment. It is my moment. And remember, Christian Cage, this is on you. You double cross me at double or nothing. You started this. And if you cross big money, Matt, you have to pay. And tomorrow night, I am going to beat your ass and send you home for good where you should have stayed. The truth is the truth, Christian Cage. The elite hunter Frankie Kazarian in singles action next year on AEW Dark. This contest is set for one fall with a 20 minute time limit. Soon to be making his way to the ring from Yucca Valley, California. Weighing 210 pounds, Frankie Kuzarian. I want to remind everybody, before this match gets underway, AEW will be returning to Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania on Wednesday, August 11th for Dynamite. And then the historic debut of AEW Rampage on Friday, August 13th. Tickets available for both events at AEWTIX.com. Combo offers also available. His opponent, accompanied by Diamond Sheik from Noonan, Georgia, weighing 320 pounds, Austin Green. Austin Green and Diamond Sheik. Diamond Sheik. I actually know Diamond Sheik very well. I've uh, purchased diamonds and all sorts of gems from him over the years. So this is the guy you're always talking about. Yeah. DS, I call him. 
the DS, actually, the Diamond Sheep. Kazarian charging in it. Austin Green. Austin is a very large man, as you can see. Kazarian just beating the daylights out. Whoa! You know, listen, even though Austin Green has a size advantage, someone like Kazarian is such a grizzled pro and tough as hell. A grizzled pro with a chip on his shoulder. Yeah. Frankie Kazarian, the elite hunter. He has Matt and Nick Jackson. He has Kenny Omega. He has Don Callis firmly in his sights. And I think it's just a matter of time before Kazarian gets his hands on those men. Austin Green can't get knocked off his feet, but I think Kazarian's getting close to doing it. Whoa! Holy cow. Not often you see Kazarian get manhandled like that. Austin Green is just massive. Tremendous display of power by Austin Green. As you know, Taz, when you got an athlete the size of Austin Green, something as simple as a chokehold, when he's putting sure. all of his upper body weight into it, just makes it that impressive. You can see the abrasions yeah, from those hands, chops. His hands the size of like catches mitts. Ooh. Laying in those chops. Diamond Sheik. Diamond Sheik. Look at the, see what I'm saying about the diamonds? Oh, he's got, I, I bought all sorts of gems. I, I, you know, I give my wife gems and diamonds all the time, you know. It's just, just, yeah, it's Thursday. Here's some diamonds, you know. So that's kind of how it rolls, you know, in the house. And the Diamond Sheik, he's hooking me up. Look at the watch he's wearing. I got three watches just like that I bought from over the years. Doesn't that make them, like, less special, though, because you give them, give them away so often? Ah, it's just no big deal. Peanuts, peanuts. I, I, yeah, I got a lot of problems. Money ain't one of them. You know that. I'm a sheik and me. We go off sometimes, drink whiskey and everything. Tess, but you got a lot of watches, but only two wrists to wear them on. I wear them on my ankles. <laughs> oh! Austin Green! Yeah, freaky like that. But Austin Green right there, just dropping Kazarian with that side slam, which was damn near a six foot drop. Austin Green, big athlete, really testing Frankie Kazarian here tonight on AEW Dark. Kazarian. Crashed and burned there, missed. This is where the veteran will take advantage. Oh, some shot in the face. Frank Kazarian bringing the heavy heavy leather here. Another big time right hand, Diamond Sheik. Oh, don't piss off the Diamond Sheik. Oh, no, won't do that to the Diamond Sheik. Right there on his keister. He probably fell on his wall and he bounced right back up. <laughs> oh, again he fell on his wall. Oh, my God, Diamond Sheik. Frankie, if you only knew the, the, the gems and diamonds and all sorts of paraphernalia that man has. When Diamond Sheik hit the ground, it was like Sonic the Hedgehog run into a thing. A bunch of gold rings just scattered out of him. <laughs> Frankie Kazarian! Oh! Jeez, Kazarian ran right through this big athlete. Big time shot by Kazarian, and he locks in the crossface chicken wing. Austin Green in a lot of trouble here. Big man, no matter how big you are when you're on the mat. He is fading and he is tapping. The winner of this match, Frankie Kazarian. I am telling you from experience, you get the grapes in, you get the legs in, poor Diamond Sheik. You get the legs in, it don't matter how big somebody is, but you have them parallel on the mat. Everybody is the same size, I guarantee it. Taz, I thought you were saying Diamond Sheik is incredibly wealthy. He is. Oh. He is. He fell down and got knocked down by Kazarian. A hundred thousand dollar bill came flying out of his back pocket. Well, Frankie Kazarian continues to steamroll the competition here in All Elite Wrestling. Tag team action right now featuring the Nightmare Family. The team of Lee Johnson and Brock Anderson is next. This is a tag team contest set for one fall with a 20 minute time limit. Being accompanied by the natural Dustin Rhodes and the enforcer Arn Anderson at an even combined weight of 400 pounds. The team of Big 
Shotty, Lee, Johnson, and Brock Anderson. Taz, we have a lot of great young tag teams here in AEW. I don't want to put the cart before the horse, but I will say that Brock Anderson and Lee Johnson have the making of one of those great young tag teams. Are you kidding me or what? And their opponents at a combined weight of 397 pounds, a team of Aaron Fry and Mark Davidson. Do you think they're already there? No, I don't think. I think they have potential to be there, but we can say potential about anyone. We have amazing teams here in this company. Lee Johnson has proven already at a young age he's tremendous. Brock Anderson, very new here, doing excellent already. I understand his legacy. I never liked his old man. His old man never liked me. We never crossed paths, and that's good for the enforcer. I'll leave it at that. Cross paths like dynamite. Well, you don't mean like not oh, literally yeah. I, I cross paths. I walked by the man. Yes, okay. I understand. I meant like in like a ruckus type of fighting situation. Freakus. Man. Aaron Fry, Lee Johnson start things off for their respective teams. Fry sends Johnson into the ropes. And Lee Johnson elevates over the top, flips through. Swing and a miss, drops a step behind. Johnson leap frog goes for the trip. Fry able to avoid contact. Drop kick. Right on the money by Big Shotty. Deep arm drag hangs on. Yeah, Lee has a, it's pretty well documented already, an excellent drop kick. Nice deep arm drag he had there also. Now Brock is legal. trip into the ropes and that is the uh, you know the relative inexperience of Brock Anderson but he delivered that great elbow drop but that's okay listen that's okay because as long as you recover well and you saw that he did right he absolutely did takes the side headlock you have to imagine both Dustin Rhodes and Arn Anderson taking notes on the outside there's gonna be a big review of the tape after this match listen it's uh, all in, in the wrestling industry in my professional opinion today the, the, the newer, younger men and younger women that are in this industry, it's a different world than years ago. They're learning in front of our eyes. No matter if it's on television, if it's, it's here on AW Dark or Elevation on YouTube, what have you, or, you know, it, people are learning in front of our eyes. It's different than back in the day. So it, it's, it's, it's a tough business to learn. It's tough, and it's tough to succeed in. Absolutely is. It's Aaron Fry driving Lee Johnson. Face first in the top tur turnbuckle, tagging out to Mark Davidson. Davidson, who got the knee to the lower back of Lee Johnson. See, I am a nice person. You see, why would you give me credit I'm nice? You never give me credit. You're nice, Taz. You know? Well, I, I was trying to say nice things about Lee Johnson and Brock Anderson, but you kind of undercut that. Well, I'm not, I know it. I, I'm, for, I, yes, there's a lot of nice things to say about Lee Johnson. I said that, and I, I, I think the, the young man is excellent. He, he's gonna potentially hold some kind of championship here at one point in his career. That young man, Brock Anderson, he's doing excellent too. It's so new here in the game. Tess. Yes. Brock Anderson, Hook, who you got in a fight? Brock Anderson against Hook? That's a layup, son. <laughs> That's a layup. You don't want none of that. Let's just leave it there. <laughs> oh, you, we'll you don't know, bro. We'll let sleeping dogs lie as Brock Anderson Gets the tag, takes down Fry, takes him down a second time. Drops Davidson down to the outside, knee lift. Showing good speed, showing good intensity is Brock. Keep Brock. moving, keep moving, there you go. Patting his shoulders like his dad. Well done. Big time drive in the corner. Brock Anderson brings Fry up onto the shoulder. And the back body drop. Mark Davidson, he, Brock Anderson spotted him and just sent him for a ride over the top. Caught his uh, neck on that bottom rope there. Ring is undefeated when that happens. Brock's going for the kill, I think. Got the gut wrench into the drop, hooks the near leg, one, two, no, Mark Davidson there to break it up. Good save by Davidson. Lee Johnson gets a shot in the midsection for his troubles. Sent into the ropes. Lee Johnson hangs on. Sends Davidson up and over the top. Davidson can't stay in the ring. Oh! He's definitely not staying in the ring now. I mean, he got lit up by his own partner. Tremendous collision. Oh, and oh, it's not over with, because Lee is going to be on the hop. Big shotty Lee Johnson over the top, driving both men down. 
was a nasty landing for Fry and Davidson. Well, right now, Fry is right for the pick in here. If Brock can finish him off with Lee. Ooh! Oh, oh, some oh, kick. Oh, oh, oh. Watch out! Spine Buster. The thrust kick falling up by Spine Buster secures the win for Johnson and Anderson. Here are your winners. Big shot, Ellie Johnson and Brock Anderson. Well, good stuff right there by these two young men. I got to give them credit. On Anderson, very proud of both of them, as is Dustin. I'm sure the American Nightmare Cody Rhodes. Very happy for both these men. And that's great. Go have a party together. Go have a big birthday cake for everybody. Why isn't their birthday? No, but it's just like, you don't have cupcakes or something. I don't know, donuts or something. Oh, everything's great. You got to win. All right, great. Are you going to have a birthday party or birthday cake after the FTW World Title match tomorrow night on AEW Dynamite? Just trying to keep both men cool. We'll see who leads with the FTW title. We'll have to wait on the birthday cake. Follow up on that next week here on AEW Dark. I call myself the decoder because I like to look at my opponents as puzzles that I need to solve. And since this match was made, Angelico, I'm trying to figure out what's that angle, what's that solution to solve you. And I got it. It's arrogance. I need to exploit your arrogance. You know, Ryan Nemeth didn't respect me either. And then I beat him in the center of the ring. So Angelico, continue to take me lightly. Continue to think that this is gonna be a walk in the park. Because that's your fatal flaw. And that's how Wheeler Yuta gets his hand raised. Julia Hart with the Varsity Blondes in her corner goes one-on-one -on -one with Matty Renkowski next here on AEW Dark. This contest is set for one fall with a 20-minute time limit. Making her way to the ring from Bloomington, Minnesota, Julia Hart. Taz, I question the distribution of labor here. Julia Hart has got to do a, a double round off on the way to the ring, and Brian Pillman has to just half assedly air guitar. <laughs> and Julia's the one that's got to wrestle. Well, he's, uh, you know, Brian Pillman is the captain of the football team. I, they have a two man football team, and Julia's chilling. And that's what's going on. Oh, they Griff, plays, Griff plays defense, Brian plays offense, and Julia cheers them on. I mean, it's just, that's really how this goes one on one football. Our opponent from Calabasas, California, Maddie Renkowski. Maddie Renkowski making her return to action. <laughs> Maddie Here's tonight yeah. on AEW Dark. Taz, how come you never had gear like that? Like Julia? Because my name's not Julia. No, Maddie. Oh, like Maddie? Oh, I actually was going to get orange or black one just similar to that. Yeah. But I didn't win any pants, so I couldn't do it. Oh, uh, Tougher than everybody else, I forgot. Uh, I just, you know, didn't really need it because I didn't leave my feet much. Except when you're throwing people. Yeah, but I didn't bang my knees. I worked like I was, you know, 6'8". So I thought I was. <laughs> that was really it. So. Oh, here we go. Thanks for the insight. <laughs> Collar noble type, center of the ring, Julia Hart. Looking to control the wrist of Maddie Renkowski. Let's see, uh, Maddie, nice uh, counter out. Versus gets her own two-on-one situation. Got a little bit of hand fighting there, but Renkowski gained the advantage. Maddie Renkowski, it's been a little bit since we've seen her. I understand she was recovering from injury. In that time, she has added quite a bit of length to that hair, Taz. Well, her hair just gets longer every day. I mean, I talked to her. She said that her hair grows uh, two inches. What she tell me? Two inches every second day of the month. That doesn't seem like it's very quick at all. Well, that's what happens when you have hair like this, man. I, I can't help you. <laughs> Shoulder tackle there by Renkowski. But she is the queen of Calabasas, the most famous person ever out of Calabasas. Leapfrog up and over the top. Hip toss delivered to Miss Reality, Maddie Renkowski. And Maddie landed right in the small of her back. Oh, got out of the way there. Julia, though, I think put on the brakes at the last second. Ooh, double boots. Sending Renkowski a cross drop kick. And Manny Renkowski trying to retreat to the ropes. Julia lateral press. Manny Renkowski not out of this one yet.
Our audience here, big fans of Julia Hart, J U L I A, J L I A U A, J U L A A I. Also, bigger fans of basic literacy than you are. Happens in the ring. Happens in the ring. That's right, Pilton. Yeah, you tell him, Pilton. That's right, Brian. <laughs> gotta go down in the ring, buddy. Everybody's the captain. Look at Rick. Oh, watch Cass out. Oh! Some shots across. And he took a shot from that top rope to our head. See that? He's trying to choke her out here. That's an illegal maneuver in those ropes there. Matty Rinkowski. Yeah, I'll tell you what, maybe this. Hold on. Cover Got lateral. Over. Look maybe at the far the, leg. Hand growing two inches out on the second day. Maybe she went two inches on the first day. It does look very long. You are correct, sir. Thank you, Tess. You know about everything. I have been known to be observant on time again. Oh, you're an expert. You can say I'm the pro wrestling observer. Well, <laughs> I will not say anything else. <laughs> 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 yeah, well. Renkowski keeping the pressure on Julia Hart. Ooh. Sledge across the spine, but a digging right hand from Julia Hart. Two ladies are beating the heck out of each other here. Julia close lines. Renkowski threw a wild strike. Julia caught it, kicked across the midsection. Julia sending Renkowski into the corner. That yeah, Julia, don't wait. There you go. Front handspring followed up by the clothesline. Running elbow strike in the corner. And now Julia Hart, the Bulldog, splits out with it. This could be the beginning of the end for Maddie Renkowski. Standing moonsault press. One, two, no. Renkowski wow. kicking out. Yeah, she inched that shoulder up. Instead of a full-blown kick out. Yeah, it was just the, the shoulder sliding up, but ooh, man. Renkowski, a lot of evil intentions on that elbow strike, but the thrust kick stopped Renkowski in her tracks. Julia Hart coming in. Oh. Splits out. One, two, three. Now winner of this match, Julia. Hart. It was tough, but at the end of the day, J U L I A, J U L I A won the match. J U L I A won the match. J U L I A won the match. Right? Good looks off. Oh, he's got the can guitar. Oh, yeah, he's got the can guitar. Yeah, yeah, he's like, he's like, he's like David Lee Roth. No, he's like, uh, what's his name? It's like Eddie Van Halen, but different. It's, it's, it's like, it's like Jimmy Page, but not. And there's Julie Hart. Like Jimmy Page, if Jimmy Page was extremely tired. <laughs> Varsity Blondes, yeah! Julia Hart victorious here tonight on AEW Dark. For the Jumbo Shrimp win tonight's hands. We didn't hear. <laughs>A proud member of HFO, The Blade, with Bunny in his corner in action right now. This contest is scheduled for one fall with a 20-minute time limit. Approaching the ring from Buffalo, New York, weighing 228 pounds, The Blade. The Blade with the support of the Bunny and make Big Money Matt Hardy here tonight. It will be Big Money Matt Hardy versus Christian Cage tomorrow night live on TNT 87 Central. It's part of AEW Dynamite Fighter Fest. His opponent weighing 197 pounds, Jake Tucker. Hey, Fighter Fest is going to be awesome. Fighter Fest 1 is going to be awesome tomorrow night, dude, for sure. It's a loaded, loaded car in Austin, Texas. It is going to be a banger, man. After I can't wait. I mean, I'm, you know, as we talked about, the FTW title will be on the line, obviously. But I'm talking about Christian Cage going up against Big Money Matt. I'm looking forward to that. Oh, Big Money Matt, Matt knocks the living hell out of Christian Cage, by the way. And in eight days' time, Fighter Fest night two, live at the Curtis Colwell Center, the Dallas Fort Worth Metroplex. Tickets available right now, AEWTIX.com. That is coming up next Wednesday night. July 21st, Fighter Fest Night 2. The uh, AEW Women's World Championship will be on the world 
The championship will be on the line with Dr. Britt Baker, sure. DMD, defending against the beast Nyla Rose next week at Fighter Fest Night 2. It's going to be a heavy duty match. This young man here is impersonating Ryan Nemeth. I think he's a big Ryan Nemeth fan, I believe. Very well could be. Who isn't? Sure. And uh, Jake Tucker trying to trying to fake out the blade, trying to psych out the blade, get the blade to flinch, but <laughs> good luck with that. Good luck. This guy's obsessed with his own ass. Yeah, that's the thing you got to be careful with. Don't don't get don't don't let blade suck you in, kid. Yeah, you gotta look, really bring just, it to hurt. You can't hurt him. Blade just smirking. Look at Bryce. He's like, damn. And, and, and Jake, man, he's bringing those punches, but it's not enough. Look at the intensity. Oh, drop kick. Could knock him off his feet, though. And now, Jake going right after him. Uh oh. Jake Tucker uh -oh. charging in a boot to the midsection. Blade. Grabbing Tucker and hanging him out to dry. Wow, that's a great way to break a, a rib, a floating rib. That's hard. You hit that top rope, man. That's cable underneath that rubber. That is tight as hell. Look at his gut wrench here. Gut Ooh, wrench. Doctor bomb. Doctor bomb by the blade. And the scalpel was delivered. Here's your winner, the blade. Guy is just a, a straight animal, man. No matter if it's Butcher and Blade, Bunny and Blade, Blade by himself, Blade with big money matters, don't matter. Blade's a beast. And we know the hostilities between the Blade and Orange Cassidy. Still simmering, still percolating, and still an issue between both men. Something to keep your eye on days and weeks ahead. And Helico, just wanted to get your thoughts about your opponent tonight, Wheeler, Utah. Wheeler, Utah. Has anyone ever even seen Wheeler, Utah? Oh, dude, actually, it was the guy you bumped into after your last match right on the ramp. Remember? Yeah, yeah, yeah. But what I meant to say is, does anyone even know anything about Wheeler, Utah. Oh man, I do. He's actually one of the hottest up and coming prospects that there is in all of wrestling. Uh, uh, yeah, yeah, no, but what I really meant was, how many submissions does he know? Oh no, for real, from what I've seen, he's really well versed in the technical arts. Serious. Uh, okay, okay, okay. Now, everything about this Wheeler dude is starting to piss me off. And you know, and you're gonna find out, that when I'm pissed off, that's when I bring out the most brutal, the rarest, and the most humiliating Yabez submissions that you've ever seen in your life. So actually, Wheeler, if you're listening, I wish you good luck tonight. Because now, mate, now you're really gonna need it. Break him in two. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Representing the Hardy family office, Private Party, Isaiah Cassidy, Mark Quinn, in tag team action next here on Dark. Oh my god, is that private party? This is a tag team bout set for one fall with a 20 minute time limit. Approaching the ring from Brooklyn, New York, at a combined weight of 353 pounds, Isaiah Cassidy, Mark Quinn, private party. Party family office all over AEW Dark tonight. And that means we need to mention that tomorrow night, AEW Dynamite Fighter Fest, night one, live from the HEB Center in Austin, Texas. Tomorrow, 8, 7 Central on TNT. It will be Big Money Matt Hardy going one-on-one -on -one with Christian Cage. Can't wait to see it. Can't wait to see Big Money Matt beat the holy high hell out of Christian Cage. That I usually get that one sided in my commentary. I, you do I quite often, actually. Uh, really? Their opponents had a combined weight of 423 pounds, a team of Dion Roosman and Joesa. 
Joesa and Roosman make their tag team debut tonight on AEW Dark. Grinded out for the come up. Big town runner. Jordan Force with the sun up. Now they don't the name from booking the tier one. And oh, look, private party. Coming after. Both men, Isaiah Cassidy, Mark Quinn. Big, fast, aggressive attack, man. Right out of nowhere. Good job by Private Party. Ooh, nice elbow there. Hanging neck breaker. Mark Quinn. Good power slam, good job. Getting dropped. Over here. Just a two count for Joe Asa. Well, right now, I mean, if uh, you know, if you're Isaiah, you gotta try to slow this momentum down here. Not sure what happened to Mark Quinn. Oh, there he is. All right. He and he did like, Yeah. You notice how Cassidy grabbed the referee's attention, allowed Mark Quinn. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Watch out. Coming for the trip, but Cassidy, and this is. This is the, all the influence of Matt Hardy that we're seeing on Private Party. All these 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 distraction techniques, sure. these well, underhanded attacks. Listen, look, Private Party was an excellent tag team before Matt Hardy got together with them. Now it's someone like Big Money Matt. He's an expert. All the success he's had in the world of tag team wrestling with his brother. Are you kidding me? Like, world renowned. Absolutely. So he's given so much advice towards Private Party to make them just better than they were. I mean, you can't go wrong. The boots being delivered by Isaiah Cassidy. Quick tags in and out by Quentin Cassidy. Joyce trying to make the crawl to get the tag to Dion Roosman. Yeah, he needed to get over there to try to get to Dion, but uh-uh. Mark Quinn knew it, shut him down in the middle of the ring. Oh, the do rag. Oh, wait, well, you can't do that now. That's illegal maneuvers. Mike Posey. Oh, look at that. Joyce now just on the receiving end of those big right hands. Roosman. Yeah, Roosman lost his cool because he saw his partner was getting it, getting played. Mark Quinn maintaining control of Joyce and Kessler holding out the boot. And almost, uh, there it is. Well, some friendly fire there by Private Party, but Roosman makes the tag in. He's coming in like a runaway train. Sure is. Bringing a lot of energy with it. Swing and a miss. Big time flying shot. Roosman takes him for the ride. The spin out into the power bomb. Yeah, good speed right there. Good footwork. Very good footwork. Roosman's speed and power on display. Quinn deciding what corner to go out of. Quinn don't know what's about to hit him. Oh, Maybe nobody, not. nobody home as Mark Quinn was able to avoid contact. Roosman just one step ahead, man. Private part is just too damn good. That's the problem. Quinn and Cassidy sending Roosman into the ropes. Hangs on, boot to the midsection, and stereo corkscrew kicks. Roosman just got jacked. He absolutely did, and Private Party with the victory. Party. Well, Taz, big money, Matt Hardy. A smile on his face after this victory here tonight on Dark. Will big money Matt be smiling? after the conclusion of Fighter Fest Night 1 tomorrow night, 8, 7 Central on TNT, when Matt Hardy faces Christian Cage. Well, here's the replay right here. Good job right there by Roosman, as we said, but then watch this. Boom! Both kicks upside the head. Roosman's out like a light. HFO, Hardy family office. Headed up by Big Money Matt, man, they got it. He's got to be so proud of all his members. They're all just winning lately. Big Money Matt, Christian Cage, tomorrow night on Dynamite. My man, Powerhouse Hobbs, is fixing to do some more damage right now on Dark.
This contest is scheduled for one fall with a 20 minute time limit. Making his way to the ring from East Palo Alto, California, weighing 270 pounds, Power House Hobbs. Powerhouse Hobbs representing Team Taz here tonight on AEW Dark, but tomorrow night, Team Taz members will collide with the FTW World Heavyweight Championship at stake. We'll have more on that in a moment. His opponent from Jackson, Michigan, weighing two. Oh! Well, that's what happens, you see, because Hobbs is not in a good mood. Because of what's going on with Brian Cage and what's going on with Ricky Starks, members of Team Taz, and that the FTW title will be defended tomorrow night, as you were getting to, uh, in Austin, Texas, live on Dynamite, Fighter Fest 1. And then Hobbs, you know, um, he, there was a match, he lost a match because of all the stuff going on, this toxic relationship between Brian Cage and Ricky Starks. And it's been tough on me, it's been tough on Hobbs, it's been tough on Hook. The whole thing's been tough on the whole group, it really has been. Well, Taz, not only did, uh, did Powerhouse Hobbs lose the match to Hangman Adam Page because of the whatever's going on with Team Taz, also that, that tag team match with, where Hangman right. and, and Ten teamed up to take on Hobbs and Starks. Oof! Oh. Well, Cage left his post on that one, but... Spine buster. That's it. Wow. But I get your point. The winner of this match, Powerhouse. Oh, Taz, I'm guessing there's a lot of people that would like to see an end to this this miscommunication, shall we put it, within Team Taz. Starting with the guy to your left, me, and also the guy in the ring who just won there in Powerhouse Hobbs. And Hook, who's not here tonight, him too. We all want to see that. We want our team, our family to be back together. And hopefully tomorrow night, a good old-fashioned fight for the FTW World title will be settled and everything will be fine. Someone's leaving tomorrow night champion. Either it's going to be Cage retaining the FTW title or Ricky Starks will become the new FTW champion tomorrow night at Fighter Fest 1. But watch how Hobbs took this young man out before this thing even started. The spine on the pine. Powerhouse Hobbs living up to his namesake. It will be Brian Cage defending the FTW World Heavyweight Champion Championship against Ricky Starks tomorrow night, 8, 7 Central on TNT. The Gun Club, Billy and Colton Gunn in tag team action against Cesar Bononi and J.D. Drake with Peter Avalon in their corner. This is a tag team contest set for one fall with a 20 minute time limit. Being accompanied by the wingmen at a combined weight of 567 pounds, the team of J.D. Drake and Cesar Bononi. Two big time athletes and J.D. Drake and Cesar Bononi representing the wingmen in action here tonight. Yeah, two completely different styles, but both big, strong, tough guys. And their opponents from Orlando, Florida, at a combined weight of 486 pounds, Colton and Billy Good. Taz, before this match gets underway, I want to remind everybody that AEW returns to the great state of Pennsylvania, Pittsburgh specifically, for AEW Dynamite on Wednesday, August 11th, and then for the historic debut of AEW Rampage on Friday, August 13th. Combo tickets are available for both events, and tickets are on sale right now, AEWTIX.com. You are in the area, hope you'll join us for Dynamite and the debut of Rampage, but right now the wingmen laying the boots to the gun club. Yeah, they didn't waste time. They tried to get the advantage over Billy and Colton. Double father and son duo. Double air J.D. Drake. J.D. Drake. Benoni or father stuck. and son? No, no, I said the gun club. <laughs> oh! J.D. Drake got stuck on the top rope. I don't know if he's, I don't know what happened. But, you know, right now, you got to see it. Ooh! It's a good job by Colton right there to really lay the lumber right at the J.D. Drake. 
Big chop right there by Colton. Got to get him in the ring, right? That's it. Get him in the ring. Now the match officially starts. Here we go. Drake and Billy Gunn. Oh, oh, oh. oh shot. Big time right hand. That was a haymaker by Billy Gunn. Billy just in control of J.D. Drake. Drake sent to the ropes, shot to the midsection. Billy Gunn, knee lift, sends Drake for a ride in the clothesline. Colton Gunn taking down the much larger J.D. Drake. Not height-wise, but definitely in terms of mass. Drake, hammer throw into the corner, reverses. Colton goes up and over the top. High boot, avoided by Colton. The drop kick not avoided by Drake. Yeah, excellent drop kick. Hook of the far leg, Drake kicking out. Real good drop kick right there by Colton Gunn. That's his brother in this thing. I'm sorry, his dad in this thing. I mean, Billy Gunn has discovered the fountain of youth. Well, he has, he really has. Could be looking for the famous sir, but Drake, ooh! Right hand drops Billy Gunn. You don't see that too often, Taz. Uh, that's a good job by J.D. Drake. Oh, man. Manhattan drop followed up by the big boot by Benoni. Billy Gunn, though, kicking out. Billy Gunn in some serious trouble here. He is. It looks like Benoni and J.D. Drake are going to single out Billy Gunn. And that's, uh, you know, if I was drawing up a game plan for this match, that might not have been my strategy, but great improvisation by the wingman. Sometimes it just happens. Whoever's there organically, you just, just laid a lumber to them and, you know, double up on them. Ooh, vicious right hand to the midsection, drops Billy Gunn. Well, Benoni has been vicious as of late for sure anyway, I and mean, he really has. Absolutely, and it, and it all, all goes back to that influence of pretty Peter Avalon, who's, some might call a snake in the grass, Taz. More like a, yeah, he's more like a, uh, like a little lizard, like a little salamander in the grass. A little snaky, little salamander with, with sandals on it. A yellow-bellied sal salamander? Yeah, yellow-bellied sap sucker. And Billy Gunn, man. This is this is not how we're used to seeing Billy Gunn. No. He's, he's uh, dealing with someone that's just as big as him, if not bigger, in Benoni. Ooh, Benoni charging in, but nobody was home. Yeah, he landed hard into that guardrail. Billy's got to get in the ring and try to tag his son in this thing. He absolutely does, but standing on either side of Billy Gunn, well, standing was J.D. Drake, but Cesar Benoni right there positioned to Billy's left. Billy trying to make the crawl to get the tag out to his son, Colton Gunn. Colton's a long way away. Colton trying to use his length to his advantage. Billy making a very labored crawl. He's hurting. He's got to dive or something. There it is. Colton makes the tag. J.D. Drake swinging a miss. Colton doesn't miss with that one. Repeated shots by Colton Gunn. He's not done. Oh, but J.D. Excuse me, Cesar Benoni. It's like a, like a brick wall that Colton ran into, but well, that didn't work. And Drake ran into the brick wall that is his partner. And Colton takes to the air, takes down Benoni. Great energy by Colton. Colton turned his back on J.D. Drake, though. He's got his eyes on Benoni. But this could cost him. Or maybe not. Benoni falls victim to the hanging neck breaker. Colton Gunn puts to the midsection. Yeah, J.D.'s in trouble. They go, looks like Colton going for double underhooks. They could maybe Colt 45, but too thick, too big and powerful is J.D. Drake. And the numbers just catching up with Colton Gunn there. J.D. giving uh, Cesar a tell him finish him. The hoss toss. Take out the trash, baby. Sending Colton Gunn into the whoa, corner. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Cannonball sent on. Oh, mama. Jeez. J.D. Drake with the chance to no. Colton Gunn kicking out. That was close. Closer than 99 is to 100. To borrow a phrase. Well, his dad's not there. That's why J.D.'s saying reach for him. They eliminated Billy from that corner. 
Yeah, the wingman laid in some heavy duty offense on Billy Gunn. Out of, out of their opponent's corner, there goes Drake. Oh, nobody there. GD Drake going for the Vader bomb. And Pannoni pulled, pulled his partner boot off. What the hell was He's that? trying to drag Drake to the that course. Oh, the Famouser! Oh, my God. The Famouser! But Pannoni comes in and breaks it up. But Noni was pulling tricks to pull his boot clear off. I've never seen anything like that. He is wearing some thick ass thermal socks in Florida during the summer. It's kind of weird. I'm obsessed with socks. Pump handle, overhook. Here we go. Pump handle into the power slam. That's where Benoni was headed. Oh, he's got him. Double underhook. Colt 45. Colton Dunn covers. Two, three. Here are your winners. The Gun Club. It was not easy, Taz. Billy Gunn suffered a lot of damage in that match, but Gun Club still was able to pull out the victory. No, I agree with you. Yeah, it was. I mean, it got a little, a little dicey there at one point, but able to pull it off was Billy and Colton, more importantly, right there. And that was it. The Colt 45 and the three count. Gun Club scoring the victory here tonight on AEW Dark. Big one on one matchup right here. Wheeler Yuta collides with HFO's own and Helico. That is next. This contest is scheduled for one fall with a 20 minute time limit. Making his way to the ring from Philadelphia, Pennsylvania, weighing 191 pounds, Wheeler Yuta. Taz, last week on this very program, Wheeler Yuta picked up what some might consider a pretty big upset over the Hollywood hunk, Ryan Nemeth. Can he keep the momentum alive here tonight against Angelico? And his opponent Two. from Johannesburg, South Africa, weighing 205 pounds on Helico. Well, the good thing for Yuta is that he got that upset victory over Nemeth last week. That was that was huge. The bad thing now for Mr. Yuta is that now, you know, you become on the map. Now guys like, oh, all right, this guy can go. Okay, so now we're gonna we're gonna scout him up a little bit instead of just thinking it's a walk in the park, so now you got to deal with a guy like Angelico, where it's going to be, uh, you know, I, don't, I don't think Angelico's going to look past you now if you're you, that's, so it's going to be a tough goal for him. Absolutely not. Angelico, as we so often mention, one of the most gifted technicians in the entire world of professional wrestling, but Wheeler Yuta has proven to be no slouch in that department, so this is a Highly anticipated matchup here on AEW Dark. They call it the People's Main Event. And AEW Dynamite returns live to the Garland, Texas, Dallas, Fort Worth, Metroplex at the Curtis Caldwell Center. Eight days from now, next Wednesday night, Fighter Fest Night 2. The AEW Women's World Championship will be on the line. Dr. Britt Baker, CMD defense against Nyla Rose. All that and so much more. Tickets available right now, AEWTIX.com. Good counter right there into that snap mare for a rear chin lock. I would keep that elbow down if I was in there. He brought it in there, that back elbow. You want to you don't want to keep that up in the air. Less, that's why you get counted. Less tightness on the hold. Keep everything tight. You saw in Helico once he when he did get countered by Yuta, slap the mat out of frustration. I think uh and Helico finding out firsthand what kind of technician Yuta is. Well, to then Helico does though, you know, he he'll early goings, he'll he'll kind of loosen up, feel what you have. He's so confident and so rangy where he can get to a rope if he can't counter. Clean and Helico. So you know, that was a clean break, but still, and then feel you out. And um, I, mean, I, I don't care who you are, you're gonna have you're gonna have a long night trying to out wrestle him. And now Yuta mocking, getting a little confident because he got a win over Nemeth, mocking Angelico. I don't know if that was smart. Angelico 
Drop step behind, has the waist lock. You can see hand fighting is Yuta. There's an almost went for a full mouse. Yep, and Helico doing a good job. He felt the, the hands of Yuta come around his wrist, so he transitioned into that full Nelson now. Into the snap mare. Headlock. Chin lock, pardon me. Well, he's trying to. I would have went for that wrist control, but he's got another idea, does Yuta? Let's see what he's got. A little flying mare, that slide stepping mare type flying mare. Yuta doesn't have the same height as Angelico, but does have quite a bit of length in the extremity, so I think he matches up quite well with Angelico from a counter wrestling standpoint. Now, stalemate here. Swing and a miss by Angelico. Yuta comes off. Arm drag takes down Angelico. Yuta pushing the pace. Nice go behind, exchange. Yuta. Fed the leg through, and Helico bent down. Yuta made a pay with the drop kick, sending in Helico to the outside. Wheeler Yuta, he'll never had a steam, but and Helico counters big Gamangiri. Yeah, he got a little too ahead of himself there. He just got kicked in the head. And Helico is in the heel of his boot into the ear of Yuta with that stomp. Very disorienting. Now, now, and Helico's just gonna pick this this guy apart here. Just pick his spots and pick him apart. Referee Bryce Remsburg trying to draw and Helico off. Out of the corner, Yuta fighting. Drop toe hold. Nicely done. Ooh. Oh, and a stop to the lower back by and Helico. And Helico. Wrenching back on the chin, placing Yo. the knee in the in the lower neck, or the upper neck. Part painful, but that knee in the back of the skull, the base of your neck, and then a grip across your voice box. Tough. And Helico He'll be thinking Navarro death roll here. He's kind of taking his time going into it. Got kicked in his face. And Yuta, three consecutive up kicks. Breaks the grip of Angelico, but Angelico. A little bit overzealous was you, and he, he ate a back elbow. Absolutely did. But Yuta still in this fight, kicking out at just about one. She got mine here. I thought he was gonna. Oh. Ooh. <laughs> I don't know. I have no idea what the hell goes up to here. This is a Navarro. Oh, look at that. A Navarro counter by Yuta. And Helico was getting a little too fancy for his own good, I think. That wasn't fancy. Just a forearm right across the cheekbone. And Helico now just brings it down to the mat. Almost like a, almost like a trailer hitch. Yeah. But he's but got. He's, he's on his back. And now look at this. And now it's a version of a octopus hold, maybe a, a manjikatami, but instead Angelico maintains control. He's got the ankles of you to cross. Yeah, once you immobilize the base, you know, the lower legs, look at this now. He's got, that's a choke. That head is so deep in that underhook, that choke. Yeah, it's actually Yuta's chin pressing down on his own windpipe. That, that will choke you out super quick, but Yuta was able to grab the bottom rope to kick out, to get that break the hold, I should say. Chops by Yuta and Helico. Well placed knee strike. And Helico. Gonna bring Yuta up. Instead, Yuta counters in midair. Remember that he he beat Ryan Nemeth last week with a pretty flash pin. Covered deep hook. Both legs were hooked. Yuta trying to repeat history. Helico's rocked here. He ran right into the boot of Yuta. Yuta. Big and Helico. Flying cross body, deep cover. No, Yuta. So close to picking up another victory. Yeah, almost got another shocking win there, but and Helico able to kick out. That's the thing with a competitor like Yuta. Cannot take him for granted. And Helico finding that out the hard way. Back elbow. But Yuta still in this one. Flattens and Helico does Yuta. No! Ooh, 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 that was close. Two, two. That was really close. 
Wheeler Yuta sticking close with Angelico. And, I mean, you know, Taz, we thought that Angelico was not going to overlook Yuta, but maybe that's what was happening here tonight. Could be. Yuta, Manhattan drop, Enzi Geary. Angelico rocked. German suplex attempted. Angelico. Oh! Ooh. The Latigo followed up by the right hand. Yuta comes in. German suplex. High arch. No! Nice kick out right there. Good bridge, but good kick out by Angelico. He was stacked up high. And Angelico retreating to the outside. Wheeler Yuta. Oh, whoa, whoa, whoa. Chope Suicida. Yuta, he, he grabbed at that leg, and Helico grabbing at that shoulder. Neither man coming out unscathed. And Helico in a lot of trouble here, Taz, more than I think we expected. Yeah, I didn't expect it myself. Oh, tremendous anti air by Angelico. Oh, well, he's going to work on that leg, dude, if he can pull this off. He does the stomp to the inside of the knee. He's going. He's setting him up for his death roll, dude. Yuta is hooked. And ah. Navarro death roll. Lock that ankle lock in. And the center of the ring. And Helico not letting it go. Winner of this match, on Helico. Absolutely no reason Angelico had to hold on as long as he did, Taz. Well, I don't know, I disagree. You send a message sometime, the guy put up a good fight. You want to shut him down and check his ego, so you keep it on there and say, listen, man, I can snap your ankle at any time. I mean, you'd have put up a hell of a fight. So once, once that death roll, that devoured death roll was locked in and put the ankle lock combined, that's it. Well, Wheeler Yuta, an impressive effort, as we mentioned, but Angelico victorious. And you know, he will be watching closely tomorrow night at Fighter Fest when his boss in the HFO, Matt Hardy, challenges Christian Cage. Tomorrow on TNT, it's Fighter Fest night one. Christian Cage takes on Matt Hardy. Ricky Starks faces Brian Cage for the FTW Championship. And Darby Allen versus Ethan Page in an AEW first. I challenge you to a coffin match. Oh. AEW Wednesday Night Dynamite, live tomorrow at 8 on TNT.